Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Martin Cross Nation. And for today's episode, we're gonna be going over the new banners that appeared in the JP version of the game. Now, unfortunately, that does mean that a new VIP Mercy only uh, banner has returned. And just like before, the same type of stipulation is applied where there is no Mercy pull on the new Supernova medal for the non-VIP banner. And there is a Mercy pull for the Supernova medal on the VIP banner. In terms of these two banners, the non-Mercy banner on has a 5 pull Mercy on the new Chernobog medal. Uh, which I will explain in a second. And for the VIP banner, you have a 10 Mercy pull on the new Supernova Soar medal. And now the only thing I'm not too sure about is whether or not the VIP banner, if you pull five times, are you still guaranteed a seven star version of Chernabog and you get a seven star version of Sora on the 10th pull as well? I'm not too sure about that. I don't really see anything in the description to say that, or is it just like reversed where Chernabog might be random, but Sora is guaranteed on the 10th pull. There's no clarification on that, so if anybody would, who plays the JP version of the game would happen to let me know in the comment section down below, I would truly appreciate it. But aside from that, let's go ahead and talk about what the medals actually do. So Prime Trinobog is a power reverse medal, tier 5, costs 5 gauges, is AoE, does 3 hits, has a 7 star multiplier of a 22.4 to a 25.98. For one turn, provides 120% guilt buff, does more damage to the higher the slot number, and turns the next medal into a power type, provides a plus 3 reverse strength buff, Buff, plus 7 power strength buff, minus 7 general defense debuff, minus 7 power defense debuff, minus 4 upright defense debuff, and a minus 4 reverse defense debuff. Realistically, Prime Chernabog is just a power reverse version of the Prime Yuffie medal that we received not so long ago in the Riku Replica Supernova banner. So his usefulness is going to be exactly the same as hers, which is honestly not the greatest. It's something worth having, of course, if you don't really have anything better, uh, such as any of the other tier 5 Prime medals, such as like Prime Cloud, Riku vs. Roxas, Roxas and Shion, for example. Anything that provides a solid minus 7 upright or reverse reverse debuff instead of just like minus four because essentially in this day and age of the game uh you're gonna want to have setups that are just purely upright or purely reverse setups as of right now anyways until we get metals whose buffs and debuffs are uh better than the latest stained glass metals that we've received uh during the anniversary the next medal, though, for the banner is going to be Supernova Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora Starlight medal. He is a power upright medal. Tier 8 AoE costs 6 gauges, deals 6 hits, has a 7 star multiplier of a 31.48 to a 47.39. For one turn, he provides 140% guilt buff, recovers 3 gauges, does not affect counters, and deals more damage with one enemy or zero parts left on raid bosses. And it is worth noting that his supernova ability is an AoE ability, but it is just a pure damage ability, similar to... Uh, supernova Riku replicas. He also provides a plus 8 general strength buff, a plus 15 upright strength buff, plus 12 power strength buff, minus 8 general defense debuff, minus 12 power defense debuff, and a minus 7 upright defense debuff. Now realistically, Supernova Soar over here is not any groundbreaking metal. He's not the best metal. Uh, he's just a really good metal. If anything, I would say he's kind of very similar to the newest uh, Supernova Elsa medal that we received fairly recently in the Frozen event. However, uh, there are some key differences between the two, which is the fact that Supernova Elsa actually fully provides all of her respective attribute buffs, which is magic, uh, for both buffs and debuffs. Whereas Sora over here does not, but he actually has the added benefit of debuffing upright defense over here, which is actually arguably more important just because of the fact that it's fairly easy to actually buff and debuff your respective attribute, but there's not enough medals in the game that can provide a significant amount of upright and reverse buffs and debuffs in the game on a significant level. A good example, of course, are like the new stained glass medals who provide seven tiers of buffs and debuffs for both reverse and upright, uh, which makes them very valuable even if with like a Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, for example. And if you happen to remember in my Frozen video, I did mention that probably the biggest weakness about the Frozen medals was the fact that they don't provide any upright or reverse debuffs at all whatsoever. 
uh, whereas Sora does, which is a good benefit. Everything else about this metal, though, is kind of nothing new that we haven't seen in other metals already. Uh, you can almost kind of think of him as just like half of a Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie metal, in a sense. As well as the fact that you do want to take into account that these multipliers that he has right here, uh, because of the fact that he does more damage with one anywhere zero parts left, which means that his 7 star multiplier, the low end of it, the 31.48, that's his AOE multiplier, and the 47.39, that's his single target multiplier, essentially, okay? So that does mean his multiplier is nothing groundbreaking. Elsa is still going to be the strongest AOE damage metal in the entire game. The only thing that Supernova Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora Starlight can actually say is the best in the game is his single target multiplier in terms of power upright metals. Specifically in terms of power upright metals, for the longest time, uh, FFRK Warrior of Light has been the strongest power upright metal in the entire game. And we received Warrior of Light almost about a year ago or so. It's been a long time. He's like Warrior of Light has aged really well. Um, it was actually kind of one of my complaints, the fact that we haven't had a replacement for Warrior of Light in a very long time. The Cloud and Leon High Score Challenge medal that JP got was supposed to be our replacement for Warrior of Light, but we never got that in Global. So because we never got that, Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora over here is going to be our replacement for Warrior of Light in terms of single target damage. But other than that, aside from the single target multiplier, which isn't that big of a difference, I should probably add, they only have about a 2.0 difference or so, but it's still technically stronger. Uh, aside from that multiplier, the only thing that actually makes the Sora metal uh, significant is the fact that he also provides a minus seven upright defense debuff. Uh, but other than that, there's nothing really too fancy about Sora. So in terms of whether or not you should actually pull from these banners, uh, or at least assuming we have the same banners in global, whether or not you should chase from, assuming the fact that you can guarantee a six star version of Prime Chernobog. Uh, personally, I like to do one pull on these and just ignore the rest of the banners. It should be fairly obvious by now that it is not worth pulling or chasing for the Sora medal from the non-VIP banner just because of the fact he's not a mercy pull uh, in the non-VIP banner. And at the same time, even if you do happen to get the VIP deal and have access to the VIP banner, I still do not think that it is worth uh, chasing for Sora over here because of the fact he's a 10 mercy pull. That's 30,000 jewels. The banner is most likely not going to be falling price, so it's going to be 30,000 jewels. And in my opinion, it's not worth sinking 30,000 jewels for this metal. The way that I see things, 30,000 jewels worth of value should only be invested in a metal uh, that is a either groundbreaking or B, um, actually big enough value that even if like four months pass by, six months pass by, uh, it will still last you for quite a while. A good example, for example, would be the newest stained glass medals that we received a few months back, okay? Those medals are still doing really well even to this day, even with Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, Kyrie out at the moment. She's supposed to be kind of like the end all be all buffer right now, uh, mine has extra attack, but even I would still use the thin glass models alongside her just because the fact that they provide both upright and reverse uh, at seven tiers, uh, buffs and debuffs, which at the moment no other metal does. So unless a metal uh, does something similar to that or better, um, the stained glass medals are still going to be in the meta even with Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie at the moment. Um, and for any reference you guys are able to look up and find out what the meta is, if you go to my website at khuxnation.com. I have an entire tab on my website just dedicated towards uh, keeping track of what the meta actually is at the moment. So, And the, and, um, and the stained glass medals do get seen quite a bit on pretty much any reverse strategy on these setups. But anyways, just a quick recap in case we do get the same exact banners as JP version did. Uh, for the non-mercy pool, assuming we get a six-star version of Chernabog in each of the banner pools, I would only pull once at most if you happen to need the metal. And I would essentially not chase for Sora over here regardless of whether or not you're a VIP player. But other than that, I would like to hear what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It is the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. 
Peace, guys. Thank you.